Anne Lister was an English diarist, famous for revelations for which she was dubbed the first modern lesbian, in an article by Chris Ralston. Lister was from a minor landowning family at Shibden in Calderdale, West Riding of Yorkshire, and conducted multiple lesbian affairs from her school days onwards, often on long trips abroad. Muscular and masculine in appearance, dressed only in black, and highly educated, she was later known, generally unkindly, as Gentleman Jack. Her final significant relationship was with Anne Walker, to whom she was notionally married in Holy Trinity Church, Goodramgate, York, now celebrated as the birthplace of lesbian marriage in Britain. Lister's diaries reveal much about contemporary life in West Yorkshire, including her development of historic Shibden Hall, and her interests in landscaping, mining, railways, and canals. Many entries were written in code that was not decrypted until long after her death. These graphic portrayals of lesbianism were so frank that they were thought to be a hoax until their authenticity was confirmed. Chapter 1 – Life Anne Lister was the second child and elder daughter of Jeremy Lister who, as a young man in 1775, served with the British 10th Regiment of Foot in the Battles of Lexington and Concord in the American War of Independence. In August 1788, he married Rebecca Battle of Welton in East Riding, Yorkshire. Their first child, John, was born in 1789 but died the same year. Anne Lister was born in Halifax on 3 April 1791. In 1793, the family moved to an estate named Skelfler House at Market Wayton. Skelfler was where young and spent her earliest years. A second son, Samuel, who was close to Anne, was born in 1793. The Listers had four sons and two daughters, but only Anne and her younger sister, Marion, survived past twenty years old. Dot at the age of seven, she was sent to a school run by a Mrs. Haggess, and a Mrs. Chetelin Agnesgate, Ripon. Between 1801 and 1804, Lister was educated at home by the Reverend George Skelding, the vicar of Market Wayton. On her visits to her aunt Anne and Uncle James at Shibden Hall, the Mrs. Meline gave her lessons. In 1804, Anne Lister was sent to the Manor House School in York, where Anne met her first love, Eliza Rain. Eliza was the illegitimate, half-Indian daughter of an East India Company surgeon in Madras, brought to Yorkshire after his death and set to inherit a substantial amount of money. Anne and Eliza shared a bedroom at the boarding school, but Anne was asked to leave after two years. She rejoined the school after Eliza had left. Eliza expected to live with Anne as an adult, but Anne began affairs with Isabella Norcliffe and Mariana Belcombe, day pupils at the school. In despair and frustration, Eliza became a patient at Clifton House Asylum, run by Mariana's father, Dr. Belcombe in 1814. Eliza Rain was later transferred to Terrace House in Osboldick and died there on 31 January 1860 and is buried in the Osboldick churchyard across the road. While being educated at home, Lister developed an interest in classical literature. In a surviving letter to her aunt from 3 February 1803, a young Lister explains my library is my greatest pleasure. The Grecian history had pleased me much. She inherited Shibden Hall on her aunt's death in 1836, but had taken charge of it from 1826, and from it drew a reasonable income. Her wealth allowed her some measure of freedom to live as she pleased. In addition to income from the agricultural tenancy, Lister's financial portfolio included properties in town, shares in the canal and railway industries, mining, and stone quarries. Lister used the income from this varied portfolio to finance her two passions, Shibden Hall and European travel. Lister is described as having a masculine appearance, one of her lovers, Mariana Lawton, was initially ashamed to be seen in public with her because her appearance was commented on. She dressed entirely in black and took part in many activities that were not perceived as the norm for women of the time, such as opening and owning a colliery. She was referred to as Gentleman Jack in some quarters. Lawton and Alista were lovers for several years, including a period during which Lawton was married and to which her husband became resigned. In 1822, 
they visited the ladies of Langorlan at Place New within Langorlan. Although Lister had met her on various occasions in the 1820s, and Walker, who by 1832 had become a wealthy heiress, took on a much more substantial role in Lister's life. Eventually the women took communion together on Easter Sunday 1834 in Holy Trinity Church, Goodramgate, York, and thereafter considered themselves married, but without legal recognition. The church has been described as an icon for what is interpreted as the site of the first lesbian marriage to be held in Britain, and the building now hosts a commemorative blue plaque. The couple lived together at Shibden Hall until Lister's death in 1840. Walker's fortune was used to improve Shibden Hall and the property's waterfall and lake. Lister renovated Shibden Hall quite significantly to her own design. In 1838, she added a Gothic tower to the main house, to serve as her private library. She also had a tunnel dug under the building which allowed the staff to move about without disturbing her. Throughout her life, Lister had a strong Anglican faith, and also remained a Tory, interested in defending the privileges of the land-owning aristocracy. Chapter 2 – Travel Lister greatly enjoyed travel, although her biographer Angela Steidler suggests her trips in later life were also a way to evade the self-realization that she had failed at everything she set her hand to. She made her first trip to continental Europe in 1819, when she was 28 years old. She travelled with her 54-year-old aunt, also called Anne Lister, on a two-month trip to France. In 1824, she returned to Paris and stayed until the following year. In 1826, she was back in Paris with her Aunt Anne, where she resumed an affair from her earlier visit to the city with a widow named Maria Barlow. In 1827, she set out from Paris with both Maria Barlow and her Aunt Anne on a tour of northern Italy and Switzerland, returning to Shibden Hall the following year. She left for the continent again in 1829. With Paris as her base, she visited Belgium and Germany before heading south to the Pyrenees. Here she did hiking as well as crossed the border into Spain. While in Spain she demonstrated both her strong adventurous streak and considerable physical fitness by ascending Monte Perdido, the third highest peak in the Pyrenees. Returning to Shibden Hall in 1831, she found life with her father Jeremy and sister Marion so uncomfortable that she almost immediately left again visiting the Netherlands for a short trip with Mariana Lawton. All in all, between 1826 and 1832, she only spent a few weeks at Shibden Hall, with travels around Britain and Europe allowing her to avoid her family at home. In 1834, she again visited France and Switzerland, this time for her honeymoon with Anne Walker. Returning with Anne in 1838, she again headed south to the Pyrenees and completed the first official ascent of the Vigny Mail, the highest peak in the French Pyrenees. This required a 10-hour hike to reach the top, and another seven to descend. Her last and greatest trip began in 1839. Leaving Shibden Hall in June with an walker and two servants, they travelled in their own carriage through France, Denmark, Sweden, and Russia, arriving in St. Petersburg in September and in Moscow in October. With a reluctant and walker in tow, she left Moscow in February 1840 in a new Russian carriage and very warm clothing. They travelled south, along the frozen Volga River, to the Caucasus. Few West Europeans had visited this area, let alone West European women, in part because of unrest amongst the local population against the Tsarist regime. At times they needed a military escort. The two women were a source of great curiosity to the people they visited. As I noted in her diary, the people coming in to look at us as if we were some strange animals such as they had not seen the like before. Chapter 3, Death Lister died on the 22nd of September 1840, aged 49, of a fever at Cowties while travelling with an walker. Walker had Lister's body embalmed and brought back to the UK, where she was buried in the parish church in Halifax, West Yorkshire, on the 29th of April 1841. Her tombstone was rediscovered in 2010, having been covered by a floor in 1879. In her will, Lister's estate was left to her paternal cousins, but Walker was given a life interest. 
After being declared insane, Walker spent some years in the care of Dr. Belcom, and because of her mental state, was unable to make a valid will. She died in 1854 at her childhood home, Cliff Hill in Lightcliffe, West Yorkshire. More than 40 years after her death, while reporting on a dispute over the ownership of Shibden Hall, the Leeds Times in 1882 stated, Miss Lister's masculine singularities of character are still remembered. Chapter 4 Diaries During her life, Lister wrote a five million word diary. It began in 1806 as scraps of paper, recording in secret code parcels sent to and from Eliza Rain, and eventually became the 26 quarto volumes, ending at her death in 1840. In addition to her handwriting being incredibly difficult to decipher, around one-sixth of the diary is encrypted in a simple code Eliza and she had devised, combining the Greek alphabet, zodiac, punctuation, and mathematical symbols, and it describes in great detail her lesbian identity and affairs, as well as the methods she used for seduction. The diaries also contain her thoughts on the weather, social events, national events, and her business interests. The majority of her diary deals with her daily life, and not merely her sexuality, and provides detailed information on social, political, and economic events of the time. The code used in her diaries was deciphered by the last inhabitant of Shibden Hall, John Lister and a friend of his, Arthur Burrell. When the content of the secret passages was revealed, Burrell advised John Lister to burn all the diaries. Lister did not take this advice, but instead continued to hide in Lister's diaries behind a panel at Shibden Hall. In 2011, Lister's diaries were added to the register of the UNESCO Memory of the World program. The register citation notes that, while a valuable account of the times, it was the comprehensive and painfully honest account of lesbian life and reflections on her nature, however, which have made these diaries unique. They have shaped and continue to shape the direction of UK gender studies and women's history. Lister's diaries have been described as part of a trilogy of early 19th century diaries by local women, covering the same period from different perspectives, along with those of Caroline Walker from 1812 to 1830, and Elizabeth Wadsworth from 1817 to 1829. In 2020 and Walker's own journal was discovered and although brief, covering June 1834 to February 1835, it covers a pivotal period that weaves through the corresponding narratives. Chapter 5, Research Helena Whitbread published some of the diaries in two volumes. Their graphic nature meant at first they were believed by some to be a hoax, but documentary evidence has since established their authenticity. A biography by the academic Jill Liddington appeared in 1994. In 2014, a conference held at Shibden Hall focused on Lister's life along with gender and sexuality in the 19th century. A biography by Angela Steidler in the German language was published in 2017, and published in English in 2018. Work by Dorothy Thompson and Patricia Hughes in the late 1980s at Birmingham University's Department of Modern History resulted in translation of much of the code, as well as discovery of the first juvenile Lister diaries and decoding of the other two Lister codes. Hughes self-published and Lister's secret diary for 1817 and the early life of Miss and Lister and the curious tale of Miss Eliza Rain, both of which make extensive use of other materials in the Lister archives including letters, diaries, and ancillary documents. Chapter 6, Popular Culture The first episode of the 1994 BBC Two series A Skirt Through History, titled A Marriage, features Julia Ford as an Lister, and Sophie Thursfield as Mariana Belcom. On 31 May 2010, BBC Two broadcast a production based on Lister's life, the Secret Diaries of Miss and Lister, starring Maxine Peake as Lister. Revealing and Lister, a documentary featuring Sue Perkins, was broadcast on the same night on BBC Two. Chamber folk duo Ohuli and Tiddo included a song about and Lister, Gentleman Jack, on their 2012 album The Fragile. The 2019 BBC HBO historical TV drama series Gentleman Jack, starring Siran Jones as Lister, depicts her life as the first modern lesbian. The series is billed as inspired by two books about Lister by Jill Liddington, 
female fortune and nature's domain. Liddington also acted as a consultant for the series. O'Hooley and Tiddo's Gentleman Jack serves as the series' primary theme music. Penguin Books published a companion volume by the series' senior consultant, Anchoma, which includes newly transcribed and decoded entries from Lister's diaries. Chapter 7, Plaque In 2018, a blue plaque was unveiled at Holy Trinity Church in York to honor Lister, it was York's first LGBT history plaque. The plaque had rainbow edging, and read gender non-conforming entrepreneur. Celebrated marital commitment, without legal recognition, to an walker in this church. Easter, 1834. The wording was criticized for not mentioning Lister's sexuality, and in 2019, it was replaced with a similar plaque with the wording and Lister 1791-1840 of Shibden Hall, Halifax, lesbian and diarist, took sacrament here to seal her union with Ann Walker, Easter 1834 inches. Chapter 8, Sources Choma, Anne, Gentleman Jack, The Real and Lister Green, Muriel, Miss Lister of Shibden Hall, Selected Letters Hughes, Patricia, and Lister's Secret Diary for 1817 Hughes, Patricia, The Secret Life of Miss and Lister and the Curious Tale of Miss Eliza Rain Liddington, Jill, Presenting the Past and Lister of Halifax, 1791-1840. Liddington, Jill, Female Fortune, Land, Gender and Authority, The Enlister Diaries and Other Writings, 1833-36. Steidler, Angela, Gentleman Jack. A Biography of Enlister, Regency Landowner, Seducer, and Secret Diarist. First published as Enlister. Eine erotische Biographie. Vicinus, Martha, Intimate Friends, Women Who Loved Women, 1778-1928. Whitbread, Helena, I Know My Own Heart, The Diaries of Enlister 1791-1840. Whitbread, Helena, No Priest But Love, Excerpts from the Diaries of Enlister.